on this continually frosty Midwest December day. Um, like many Ohioans, um, Mark Kwame came with the promise of trying to create jobs. Uh, the governor praised him for agreeing to do it at one dollar a day um, when he was in the cabinet. A few, about a month ago, a month and a half ago, we found out that since he had left Jobs Ohio, Drive Capital had been formed and that um, there was an effort uh, to um, get Ohio State to invest $50 million of its endowment into Drive Capital. And we all received many different documents related to that, uh, although there were heavy redactions, and uh, some of the redactions led to questions that we had over why they were redacted. Um, and so we asked other agencies where Mr. Kwame and uh, his partner, uh, Mr. Olson, had gone and pitched funding. Uh, we also found out at that time in, the, in some of the articles that were written that OSU had an agreement that, um, that the documents had to be uh, given to Mr. Kwame for review as well before they went public. Uh, we uh, carefully crafted many different public records requests to different entities asking essentially for the leave behind of Drive Capital, the documents that were left behind when they pitched. Um, we got different public agencies that had different answers. Uh, for instance, the Police and Fire Pension Fund actually sent us a note saying that they had agreed to sign a non-disclosure over their viewing of it off of a third party system and so therefore they were not able to give us those records. But we also asked for the same document from OPERS at one of those agencies. And the document you have today, um, this indicates what was left behind by Mr. Kwame. Now I want to be very clear that Drive Capital left this behind with OPERS. They did not leave this behind necessarily with OSU. We can't tell for sure. Um, although many of the items in this document from Lee Behind appear to be some of the items that are in the OSU redacted piece. It, without actually having OSU unredacted, there is no way to know exactly what are in these documents. However, um, if you turn to the second page, you will see that the terms of their proposal or... Brian, we don't have it. You don't have that? Um, it is up behind us, but we will send it with um, The terms of the proposal are, as you will see, a term of 10 years. Uh, the management fees are 2% of committed capital per year for the first six years, and 1.5% of com committed capital for the remaining four years of the 10th. Um, so that would be 2% of $50 million, assuming it applies to Ohio State, and 1.5% for the following four years would total $9 million over a 10-year period that Mr. Kwame and his partner would make as management fees. In addition, this document also indicates that Profit distributions will go 100% back to each of the limited partners for their capital commitment, the other investors. And then once Ohio State got their $50 million, Mr. Kwame and his partner, general partner, will receive 20% of the profits going forward. It is impossible to calculate how long it will take for Ohio State to receive that money and him to get the 20%. And the fund will bear the organizational expenses of drive capital. Go ahead. Sorry. It's a shaky video now. Uh, <laughs> um, and the fund will bear organizational expenses up to a half a million dollars. So, all told, what we do know for sure under the proposal to OPERS 
if you apply it to Ohio State's $50 million alone. Mark Kwame, who came to Ohio, and his partner now, Chris Owens, who came to Ohio saying he was going to work for the government for a dollar, will stand to make under these terms, if they're applied to Ohio State, $9 million plus 20% of profits after the investment is made whole, plus a half a million dollars in capital startup costs for the company. Now, I don't know about you, but that's not a dollar a year. That's about $9 million plus reason to take a dollar a year, spend your time at Jobs Ohio where you're supposed to create jobs, making friends in Ohio, a state that he had not had much experience in, and three years later having nine million reasons for coming to this state. In the meantime, I would remind you that in September Ohio's rate of employment was at 7.4 percent, jumped to 7.5 percent. Our recovery is stalled. The average U.S. rate is 7.3 percent. So this appears to be a very quite quick way to profiteer off of contacts in Ohio. There are two other issues I think need to be addressed before I bring Catherine up. One is, it is very clear from making these different record requests that different state agencies are interpreting public records law different ways. That in fact some state agencies believe that they can, for confidential reasons, wave away public records access or find creative ways not to allow it. Um, and it is something the, that the Attorney General needs to look into and the legislature needs to look into because a public record standard should be a public record standard and Ohio State University is a public institution. Um, the second issue that I think is very important about this is the lack of a revolving door policy for Jobs Ohio that is significant because there is no doubt that you can trade on your influence in the state if Mark Kwame had very limited experience with Ohioans three years ago, and suddenly he's able to go to Ohio State and propose a large fund, something larger than he's really ever handled, with no real experience in his paperwork, uh, based on friendships and based on dinners, and he is able to cash in at a minimum $9 million, it appears, depending on whether these numbers apply at Ohio State. And I want to be very careful and acknowledge it appears, because I cannot see the actual OSU documents. That is a pretty hefty way to cash in. 